We're at the National Quartet Convention with all the members of the Mark Trammell Quartet. Sitting right next to me is Mark Trammell. Welcome to Gospel Music Today. Hey, my friend. It's so good to be back with you. We're glad to see you again. I'm going to ask you to introduce the members of the group. All right. Uh, right behind you over in the corner is Eric Phillips, who started with us 10 years ago when we started this ministry. And uh, for seven years was our tenor. And uh, as most people know, his other love in life is law enforcement. And he was a city police officer in Gadsden, Alabama, where we live for almost three years. And he decided that he, his quote was, I'd rather be around God's people as they're dodging bullets. And I don't blame him. So we're really glad to have him back. And then uh, next to him is Pat Barker, um, who needs no introduction. So I'll go on to the next one. <laughs> no, actually, he's our bass singer and resident clown. That's Pat. And uh, he's one that keeps me at the foot of the cross on a regular basis now. And then next to him is my son, Nicholas, who started with us uh, uh, August 1st and is now swapping out with me, singing lead and baritone. And uh, right behind me is Dustin Sweatman, who has been with us for eight years, singing the lead, playing piano, writing songs. And Dustin has just accepted position at Bethel University. Uh, in their uh, music department as their renaissance program director of choirs and ensembles. Okay. So uh, he's, he's getting ready to uh, be a very busy guy in the education world. And um, in just a few days, he will uh, assume that position there at Bethel University. So uh, we bid him a fond adieu, as they say. See ya. And uh, <laughs> we'll accept for one. We'll get back. Uh, we want to talk about new projects and things. Uh, let me uh, talk to these guys yeah. for just a second. Who are the uh, tenor singers uh, that uh, influenced you when you were getting into this? Well, I've got to say my dad. Yeah. Of course, Ernie Phillips. Uh, I, I enjoyed listening. I, to be honest with you, I didn't really enjoy gospel music until I was about 16 years old. My first experience at the National Quartet Convention actually was 1995 at the Kingsman 40th anniversary reunion and so I came to that Happy. enjoying to see uh, yes I want to enjoy watching the Kingsman and see dad sing yeah. with the Kingsman because yeah. I was so little uh, when he was there I never really got to experience you know that era of the Kingsman so after that convention I came home I, I was hooked came home and got out the old records the Kingsman <laughs> albums yeah. you know first yeah. live naturally Chattanooga live Alabama live and so I started listening, I got hooked, so I enjoyed listening to my dad first. And then in the 90s, like that, it was Ernie Haas, the Cathedrals. Uh, I enjoyed listening to him and Brian Free, uh, just to name a few, uh, yeah. just some of my, my favorites. And, and dad is still singing. He, he sings a little bit, just around the house mostly. Uh, Part-time stuff. <laughs> well, we, 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 we see his name pop up uh, every once in a while. He filled, he actually filled in with the Kings in the first three months of yeah. uh, this year and, and had a good time. Obvious uh, where the musical influence came from, but uh, when, was there a certain time when you decided that this is really what you would like to do? Uh, about the time that I started college, I started really getting an interest in trying to look for a group to sing with and I got several different groups CDs and started learning the parts and everything and um, I went to college for about three years and the position came open with the Perry's and that was my first uh, full-time position and that's when I really decided hey I could do this for a living maybe so <laughs> I guess that runs in the Trammell family that you just start off at the top well uh, <laughs> funny for him he, he's starting off much further up the ladder than I did I started with a group called the Senators Quartet, and I, got, I made $75 a week. So he's a little he's making $100 a week, so he's a little further up the ladder than I was. If I had known you uh, when you were 10 years old, yes. and asked you what you wanted to be when you grew up, mm -hmm. what would you have told me? 11. <laughs> but I was a smart aleck when I was 10. I wouldn't say that now. That's right. Thank you. Um, when he was 10. It would have been a, it would have been a singer. Really? Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I've been singing since I was four or five, you know, around the house, yeah. like Ernie Shower. Phillips. And um, I've loved it. I mean, my dad, you know, was a choir director, and we were raised in church, around church music, and yeah. that's been a love of mine ever since I was small. So it's a dream come true to to be a part of a quartet. Not necessarily to be with Mark, but 
to be in a quartet is a dream that I've always had. It's turned into a nightmare, to be honest with you. <laughs> Thank you. You're more than welcome. He was wound up a few minutes ago. Too much ice cream this week. <laughs> Let me get uh, Dustin over here. That's what he is. That's right. What is the, uh, what is the new job? Well, I'm, I'm going to be teaching at uh, Bethel University in McKenzie, Tennessee. Uh, the program is, is called the Renaissance Program, and what it is is a, is a performance program, basically, for uh, people who want to be professional musicians or singers. And so we have several different ensembles, a choir, 16-voice group, a quartet, which is I hear the quartet convention this week. And um, basically we take them out on the road after we've taught them and things like that, and they, that's how they earn their credits, uh, partially in that program. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's a great program. Yeah. Now, before we get to the new CD, let me ask you this question. We've got a group of people here, even Pat. <laughs> uh, you got young guys who are uh, mature beyond their years. You got talented people. You got people, the point is, who could do anything. And they've chosen to be on the road singing gospel music. We go to the concerts and it look, we, everybody's applauding and having a great time. Uh, we know enough to know that there's a little more to it than that. But what keeps you doing this? How did you, why did you choose this? What's, what's special about it? You could be doing anything else. Yeah, boy, it, it takes a lot longer to answer that question than to ask it. The real bottom line for me is I knew at a very early age this is what I wanted to do, and I started doing it at, a, at the age of 15 um, on a professional level. My dad didn't really want me to do what I was doing. He didn't want me to get up Thursday morning and go to school half day and get on a Continental Trailways bus and go to Memphis and get on the other bus and go out for the weekend and him have to pick me up Monday morning at the trailway station and take me straight to school. He didn't want to do all of that, but he would not say no to me because of what it was. I will tell you it was very taxing, very stressful, but in the beginning days, he was looking to see just how much my desire was, how high the level of desire was. Do you really want to do this? And if you really want to do it, do you want to do it for the rest of your life? Because my dad was very successful in small plumbing business, plumbing and heating business, and, and could have turned that over to me just as easy as not. And I could have stayed at home and made a good living at home. But I could not get this out of my system. And the more I did it, the more I wanted to do it, and the more I understood it's what God designed me to do. And these men can tell you, I eat, sleep, drink, and breathe it. And uh, sometimes that's boring to them because they have other things in life that they, you know, are attached to and want to do and they're a part of. This is my life. It's not my profession, it's my life. And it has been for almost 40 years. And I wouldn't trade places with the president right now. I'd rather do this. Tell me about the new CD. The new CD is called Lifetime, and it is a walk through my life from a musical standpoint. Uh, the writers, the groups, and the songs that have most positively affected my life in uh, over 40 years now um, that I have paid close attention to this music. And we honor uh, a lot of different things. We honor the like Marvin P. Dalton and Harold Lane, uh, Albert Brumley, um, and then we honor groups like the Fevers, the Couriers, uh, Spear Family, uh, James Blackwood, those kinds of folks. That's what this project is about, is those songs, those moments in my life that most positively affected me. And that's what the project is. And we, uh, the Happy Goodman Family, one of my very favorites as a young person growing up. And we did a song that uh, I heard them do back in the early 70s. Uh, sitting around my uncle's record player, he got the brand new project covered in warmth. And he said, uh, come over and eat dinner tonight. Uh, I said, well, you'll have to come get me. He said, that's fine, I can do it. So uh, I spent the night with Uncle Walter and Aunt Eva that night. And he and I would go into his record room and we'd listen to records for three, four hours at a time. But that was brand new. A song called Meet Me Over on the Other Side was on that project. And uh, 
it's one of those that just stuck to me. Yeah. Well, to uh, all the members of the Mark Trammell Quartet, thanks for being on Gospel Music today. Glad to be back. Thank you.